influences though? I had a lot of influences, so I might be like that cake, you know, to have all the ingredients, but yeah. you know, with the, the final product is what you eat, is what you have. Um, um, first and foremost, uh, Bishop Marvin L. Wine is was, oh, was like my, he's like my hero. One of you the know. best, uh, just yes. incredible. Uh, my late uncle, Bishop William Abney, um, um, Bishop Bruce Parham. Yes, sir. Um, uh, William McDowell, of course, uh, Fred Hammond. Uh, Charles Laster Jr., who's right here. You know, some yeah. of these guys are from right Detroit. Uh, Charles Laster Jr., um, uh, Mr. Chris, the late Minister Chris Jones. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, these were guys that, that were very influential. Uh, Elder Jason C. Smith, these guys are very influential um, in my musical development, um, my cultivation, and even my now. Mm -hmm. um, some of them have gone on, you know, to be with the Lord. Uh, but, but we still, you know, I, I, I just still hold them and hold their music, their sound, you know. So you, you just take a little bit of everybody, man, and just, you know, you tap into what God is giving you. And it's okay, you know. Yeah. You have your own distinct gift that God, everybody has their own distinct gift that God has given them. You don't have to be nobody else. Just be the best you. That's it. That's and, right. and God will do the rest. That's right. So why, why do you think it's important? Um, of course, you're, you're quite a, uh, an incredible or, or, oracle as well, excuse me. Um, but why do you think it's important for you to do music ministry right now with it, with the amount of musicians that are out and people that are singing? You know, why do you think it's important that your voice be heard? I really believe that, um, and, and personally, I believe that what God has given me is a, is an assignment to somebody mm. or somebody's, I would say, to a, a group of people that God is. Each one of us, the gift that God has given us is the solution to an earthly problem. Wow. Somebody has a problem that God distinctly created. Ron Todd created, Marvin Winans created, Fred Abney yeah. to be the solution to that problem. I'm not everybody's solution, but I'm somebody's solution. Yeah. And and if I could just tap into what God has given me to do, then, you know, everybody has their like everybody has their gift. Everybody yeah. has their sound. Everybody has their music. And you know we support everybody. We you know pray for everybody. We encourage everybody. But there's somebody that's that's on the verge of giving up. That only what God has given me is going to help them. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that's that's why it's important for me to do what I'm doing. Not to get everybody, but to get who God has ordained and anointed me to reach. Excellent. Excellent. Now. Uh, what would you say to that young person? Uh, and we're not calling you old because now you, you you you're not in the thirties club no more. Let, let me say 21. that. <laughs> Forty is the new twenty one. Right. Forty is the new twenty one. <laughs> but um, but you know, even with the, some of the the people that you named, a lot of the youngsters, you know, like it's amazing. Now I, I listen to a lot of the kids that are coming up now. They're not even familiar with the Chris Joneses, unfortunately. Wow. And some of the people that we grew up listening to, Thomas Whitfield, and mm -hmm. things like that, that were big influences for us. Uh, but what would you say to that young person that that knows that God has called them, but they get discouraged because of the amount of people that are are ministering, things like that? Um, to think that their voice isn't important or that they don't have anything to bring to the table. What would you encourage them to do? I think one of the biggest uh, letdowns and disappointments that we deal, and, and it's, a, it's an enemy of the time, um, one of the things we deal with that's a disappointment is that everybody, we're in an era where everybody feels like they have to compete wow. with the next person in order to be great when in fact right. if you just be who if you tap into the creative gift that God has given you that gift once again is the solution yeah. to That's somebody's it. problem mm -hmm. that gift is your resources that gift is going to be your retirement plan because just like a doctor we all got to go to the doctor That's where right. that doctor is a creative gift and we're op operating in a creative gift so that Watch this. He can be the solution to somebody's problem. Yeah. And that doctor never <coughs> worries about whether or not they're going to get paid. <laughs> Insurance is going to pay them. Oh, yeah. Co-pays is going to pay them. Somebody's going to pay them. That's right. Because they're the solution to a problem. Same thing with us. Once we tap into our creative gift, 
we don't have to worry about resources. We don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to be taken care of because people pay for solutions. That's mm -hmm. right. They don't pay for problems. That's, That's it. right. And every young person is competing, trying to say, well, I want to get on that level of this one, or I want to get on that level. We were just talking about the uh, <laughs> the writer that we yeah. were listening. Yeah. A young person or an artist. I, I wouldn't even say a young person. An artist yeah. like myself, yourself, would look at that and be like, dang, you know what? Wow, I can't even I can't even do this or I can't even get that. We'll be intimidated by numbers. We'll be intimidated sure. by there's giants in the land. Like the yeah. children of it. We'll be intimidated. Why? Because we're inferior and we're insecure and we're not secure in who God has called us to be. Yeah. We gotta tap into that gift and hey, be the best you. Learn how to cultivate that gift. Be the best you you can be. And I'm not I'm not trying to be, you know, better than everybody else. I'm just trying to be the best me. I love it. That's right. That's I love good. it. And, you know, I, it's funny that you say that because I think it's so important that people uh, keep that in mind uh, mm -hmm. as an artist. But one thing that I always say is that people have to realize that, especially when you, when you really say... Uh, that I'm doing this as an assignment or I'm doing this unto the Lord but that doesn't always mean that you get a, a national platform right. that doesn't right. always mean that you have to travel and tour the world uh, I always say some of the greatest uh, vocalists and the most anointed sometimes are the ones that are in the hole in the wall on each corner of in the city of Detroit mm -hmm. who are being very effective in their local assembly. I mean, souls are being saved, people are being delivered through their ministry, but none of us know who they are. But they're content with what they're doing because they understand that they're being effective. They understand that somebody is being uh, uh, affected by what they're doing versus being a household name. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that's important that people understand that? God's platform is the best platform for you to have. And if you strive to do his will, you have his platform. The Bible said a man's gifts will make room for him and bring him before mighty men. A man's gifts mm -hmm. will make room for him and bring him before mighty men, which means there is a room mm -hmm. that a man's gifts automatically have. Yeah. And it's going to bring him before mighty men, which means mighty men are waiting with the resources yeah. mm -hmm. for that man's gift that's right. That's already been made room for. The problem is, I don't know my gift. Ah. Do, do you think that part of the reason um, that people are insecure is because um, everybody's still trying to survive instead of live? And, and, um, and what I mean by that is, is that when you look at a person that's trying to survive, everything is always about me it's, it's always about me living to the next day and i think that um in particular the african-american churches um you know I, I oftentimes tell people that our security is directly tied to two places our, our economic situation and our theological position about god uh, those two things says to me that i don't have nothing to worry about as long as i'm in the complete will of god god is a sovereign god and that even when I don't have the answer, he always do. And um, and so just hearing you, it sounds like you've come to that place of rest um, with that, that I'm going to be secure financially, I'm going to be secure in God, and I don't care what you say or what you think, this is what I'm going to do. And I want to applaud you for that. I believe that purpose, and thank you, I believe that purpose has nothing to do with race, mm. creed, or culture. That's right. I believe that your purpose is divinely directly. It comes from God. And God has no respecter of persons. He has no respecter of race, creed, culture. His only culture is the kingdom. You, and when you tie your purpose into the kingdom and really tap into it, you're going to reach everybody. It doesn't matter. You're going to reach everybody. And, and we talked about platform. Your platform may not be a Mexican platform. Your platform mm. may not be a Chinese platform. Your platform, we, we, we may not go to uh, the third world countries and do the, the big tours in South Africa and all that. I'm perfectly okay with that because yeah. if what God has for me is tied into my destiny, my steps are ordered by him. If those are part of those steps means I step into a third world country, 
that's where I'm going. If it's not, I'm not going to say I'm a failure that's because right. I never got to sing in South Africa or Antarctica or right. Australia. That's, 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 that may not be a part of my creative purpose. Right. That wow. Everybody has their own platform that God has for them. If it's the small local church with 50 people, with the mother's board and the deacon's Come board, and they still faithful and they're still purposeful in that local assembly, we can't look at it and say, oh, that's not kingdom. Who's to say if God didn't call them for those people for such a time as this? We can't get into, I, I think it's, it's this term of celebrity and, and stardom. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, if we not out doing all of this stuff, then we're not, we're not nobody. But I, I'm not of that mindset. You know, I want to do what God wants me to do, and I want to be prepared. So if he takes me there, mm. I'm prepared to go there. Mm -hmm. If not, I'm just still prepared. That's right. You know, my apostle all, oftentimes say, stay ready to keep from getting ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I get the call tomorrow to go to right. Africa, I don't want to just be saying, oh, my God, what am I doing? No. Mm -hmm. I need to be preparing myself. Yep. You know, the apostles, I, they dream to live in the day that we are. Right. We, 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 we live in right now. You know, they sure. didn't have the technology, but they were just as effective as we are. Yeah. Because our focus is off. You know, I think I think part of some of the challenges that we have uh, in the church, especially um, us as African-Americans, because, you know, I, I've, I've had the opportunities to be around middle class, um, white people, um, big churches, little churches. Um, I've had a chance to be around black people. One of the one of the commonalities that you see amongst us is is that everybody is fighting for position and title. I, I, you know, it's amazing to me how everything works on the west side of the state versus on this side of the state. People are not don't want titles over there. They they, they don't want to get. I don't I don't want that. I don't want no title. Don't give me no title. Don't call me something. Don't give me extra work than what it is I have. But versus when you come over here, it's a little bit different. People feel like they're valued because of their title or their gift or, you know, and things of that nature. And, and one of the things that, you know, I, I asked this question a long time ago, why is it that our people is like this? Why is it, why, why can't we go places and just because you can hoop and holler and I'm a teacher, I should be secure in my gift and you should be secure in your gift. Yeah. And so, like, what I start to realize is, is that we actually live in a country because of, the, of capitalism. Capitalism is the economic structure that we have. And what capitalism says is that if you got the house, the car, uh, uh, the girl, the money, then you are somebody. The challenge with that is, is that, is that in a church environment, what you're going to do if God never bless you with a big house? God never give you a, the, the platform that you expect. Are you still going to be secure that God has called you? Are you going to still be satisfied with where you are? And I think because of uh, uh, um, our thinking around money, finances, and stuff like that, it's directly proportionate to our security. And so that's the reason why you can go to churches and and everybody is insecure. So I got to come in and dress the best. I got to have the biggest cufflinks. I got to be driving the nicest car. You know, I got to be making the most money, even if only got $5 because we have not dealt with this insecurity issue, um, in particular with preachers, in particular with our churches, because they have a reason to be insecure. When you're surviving and you're trying to, to make it, you can't never be secure like that. Why? Because if you're not trying to win the game, then you never will. But if you're secure in God, it don't matter what somebody else is doing. I know I'm doing what I'm called to do, and that's it. It's all the name of the game is about being secure um, and who God has called you to be. That's right. And we have to adapt to the Jesus culture. That's right. Which is the kingdom culture and not be adapt to the worldly culture or the culture of capitalism. And, you know, even in the church, it's a false sense of prosperity. That's right. That's right. That's, you know. Jesus' terminology of prosperity versus what's being preached now is just, is totally off. And yet, it's such a big deception that some people go to churches and don't feel like they're less than because they don't have. Mm -hmm. And yet, I'm just coming to Christ. That's you know, right. Jesus said, the poor, you're going to have what you always, always. Right. But he didn't necessarily say, you're going to be poor. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But he said, the poor, you're going to have what you always, which means 
Blessed are the poor in spirit. You know, blessed are the poor in spirit. So what you gonna do? You gonna treat them bad because they're poor? Mm -hmm. You gonna make them feel like they're less of a kingdom citizen because they don't have more than enough? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta keep and continue on and, and preach Jesus. Preach Jesus. That's don't right. preach uh, organizational infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Don't preach capitalism. <laughs> don't preach your persuasion. That's don't wrong, preach, man. you know, who you connected with. Preach Jesus. You know, because when you preach Jesus, Jesus' is preaching is going to offend That's your right. organizational infrastructure. That's right. That's Jesus' is preaching is going to offend your church doctrine. Right. Jesus' is preaching is, and his teaching is going to offend Everything that we have that have been placed, you know, I'm come from the old, you know, holiness, apostolic, sanctified church. Oh, yeah. Jesus, his preaching is going to offend every possible teaching that's out here today. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. You know, because when if you look at the whole ministry of Jesus, his biggest enemies were pagans. And pagans weren't unbelievers. Pagans were religious people. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, heathens. They, they these were the church, the religious leaders and sects of that time. He came in and offended them. Were his haters? Them were his enemies? Yeah. They weren't demons. These were church folk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So his teachings is going to offend our theology, our that's ideologies. Right. You know, that's why it's just best to just preach Jesus. I don't care where you go, what church you go to, who your pastor is. You just preach Jesus. Amen. Listen, we got to move on a little further because everybody's itching to hear this new single of yours. Yes, yes, Tell yes, us yes. about Blessed is the Man. Blessed is the Man was a song that I wrote just sitting at the piano and I was in the Word. And, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people that when I write songs, it has to be Word. I believe in releasing the Word yeah. into the atmosphere. That's because actually was, gospel yeah, music. Yeah. <laughs> when it's actually the gospel. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just inspiration. He said, my Word is going out of my mouth. It shall not return it to me, Lord. but it's going to accomplish that, that yeah. I send it out there. So if I sing it, if I say it, I expect everything that God has for me to come back than what I release. And that's what I want to release and encourage the people of God. All right. Well, listen, here we are. This is the world premiere of Fred Abney's brand new single. It's called Blessed is the Man Live. Here we go. 